A very warm welcome to today's session. And today we are going to talk about not just diversity and inclusion, the way it is talked everywhere. We have already heard a lot about it. But today's conversation, after today's conversation, your perception about diversity and inclusion or about the LGBTQIA community altogether will completely change after you meet today's amazing humans that I'm here with. Please welcome Shubankar and Sonal, who are the guiding lights at 247.ai and they have set the path for so many other people who are still struggling to come out to the world or step out of their closet. Without further ado, we will move on to what they have to share with us. And I told you, you will be amazed and you will be surprised to learn so many things about the community, about diversity and inclusion in general that we have probably never imagined. So Shubankar and Sonal, how are you guys doing today? We are fine, Isha. Thank you so much good. for asking. Thank you so Thank much. You, Isha. Thank you so much for joining me in the conversation. It's very like nice to, we were having this offline chat as well, just before this. And it was, I mean, I want this session to be also the same heart to heart conversation that we were having. We were having. Uh, so Shubhankar, let's begin with you. Uh, so you have been with 247.ai for close to three years, I guess, right? Yes, almost yes, like, right. almost three years. Uh, so why don't you quickly introduce yourself to our audience and uh, share your journey on the professional front and also how when you first came out to your parents, when you first came out to your friends and close circles, like how has your experience been so far? Why don't you, we would love to learn about it. Uh, so Isha and Sonel, first of all, uh, thanks for being with me on this conversation. It was a pleasure to get both of you. And uh, as Sonil started the conversation stating that we will learn a lot about um, the community, the LGBTQIA, about each other, very importantly. So um, I came to know about myself when I was 18. And uh, that was a very early age, I think. Uh, yeah, there are people who came to know about themselves a little earlier than me. I'm not, uh, not the earliest. Uh, having said that, um, when I came to know about myself, it took me a day to understand what is happening, why is it like this, uh, why do I get um, get attracted to the gender of the same sex, um, and then what happened is that uh, internet was not the normal thingy in those days, and uh, obviously I had to, you know, I had to bunk my college, uh, go to a cyber cafe, and uh, search everything. Um, learn things and to my surprise what I came to know in the internet is that it's not only me I'm it's not only something which which I have in me it there are so many people across so many nations so many states which also harbor or share the same kind of feeling they feel the same way that I do and trust me, Isha, you will be su uh, surprised to know that it's not something which is only with human beings. It's also with the other animal species. So there are near about 33 species in the animal kingdom who also so show homosexuality as uh, as the way of life. So mm, there is. So it's absolutely normal to be homosexual, and it's not. Uh, a me who is a homosexual or a somebody else from the community who is a homosexual. There are animals also who shows the same thing. Having said that, um, when I first came out to my parents, they were pretty accepting about the whole fact. But just because this was, um, we don't have so many examples to look at in sight because heterosexual is the, um, like we get to see more of heterosexuals or people from the homosexual or the LGBTQI community are more closeted. They don't come out. So there are not many examples. So they had lots of questions. And the best part of uh, me and my parents were we both are good. We both were open to questions, right? We, I was open to answer their questions and solve their doubts about anything which is LGBTQIA. And they were also very open to ask me questions about things which they didn't understand. Now, gradually, 
from family it came to my friends in the college and university now when i came out to them they were also very supportive and they were very supportive learning the fact also that uh, i'm out to my parents which might be a bigger challenge which people might say uh, i have heard people asking me do your parents know about it like how did they react to it and stuff like that but i'll tell you something isha and sonal my parents did their own journey everybody has to do their own journey like the journey which i did for myself like the journey of acceptance they also did their own journey of research and understanding how is it to have a, a gay son having said that i missed to inform uh, all of you and all of you might know but uh, just for the bigger audience i am from the lng team of 247 ai um and uh, yeah that that's all for now over to you isha all right shubhankar so thank you really thank you so much for i'm sharing some really interesting trivia about the community about your journey and it's so nice to know you know that uh, the spirit that you share that it's not just a journey about people from the community it's also a journey about people who are connected with them like your parents you mentioned and that it was a whole new world to them as well and they like uh, made sure they accompanied you in the, in that journey and so that's such a like a beautiful and such a like a heart touching story and uh, so with that uh, sonal will move on to you uh, why don't you please introduce yourself to the audience and uh, we would love to know more about your journey how has it been so far at 247.ai how has it been with your parents your friends what is the question that you share with your colleagues over here Uh, we would love to know everything. Hi, Shyam Shankar, and uh, hello, world. So I am Sonal, and I'm from Odisha. And um, so all these things happened to me when I was a I was a child, and I used to uh, you know dress up like my dress up like a girl. And my parents never forced me, you know, to wear a boy's dress or something like that. They were okay with it uh, in the beginning. but uh, when i went to school uh, my parents told me this is not uh, the gender you belong to and they cut my hair and put me i mean i started wearing boys dresses so i it was difficult for me to accept that but with time i just adjusted with the environment uh, thinking that maybe when i will grow up uh, maybe i'll become maybe my thoughts will change uh, regarding my problem but the things remain the same and uh, when i entered college then only i realized that something is uh, different with me i'm not like other boys i hope guys i'm audible to you you are you are absolutely audible yeah you sure can. thank you so yes um it was 15 when i started realizing that uh, this is really wrong what is going on around me i mean the way i think or the way i feel is not really uh, like a boy uh, i was also uh, uh, you know not comfortable with uh, sharing my problem with anyone so somewhere i was suffocating with the, the thoughts that what people will think about me i tried to behave like uh, you know i tried to talk or behave like a boy just to blend in with the society but that didn't happen and the the moment uh, one day just like uh, subhankar mentioned that we had no internet that time Uh, and i didn't have any phone or anything no computers so one day by by uh, by a chance i uh, got to know about people like me on tv there was a show called taboo in national geography where i actually learned about people like us people belonging to lgbtq do i didn't know what uh, you know uh, where i belong to whether i am a gay or a trans woman i didn't know anything about it but i had a clear idea that there are people like me who uh, they who really transform themselves into a man or woman just to feel comfortable with their uh, i mean the feelings and thoughts that we have inside so there uh, i started uh, then i realized completely that this is who i am be and um, the only thing that was a great 
cycle was telling my parents or friends that uh, who I am and they would accept me or whatever society thing for me. Uh, somehow I completed my studies and um, I didn't think about the society or I didn't think about my family. I just left my place and uh, find a job somewhere else. Yeah, initially finding a job was definitely difficult. I do, uh, I got a job uh, in a place, but due to the same social discrimination, I didn't find a room, I didn't find any accommodation for which I had to lose my first job. Um, I was really depressed because I was staying with my parents and my parents of society were telling me to cut your hair, just uh, be like a normal guy. Uh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that and one day I just, um, just left home and I came back, I, I again returned home with a job that was in Orissa too. So uh, finally, the, the first, my, my first job as a trainer uh, really helped me a lot. Uh, but still, you know, uh, in my state, it is very difficult for me. Uh, uh, like I cannot stick to one job forever. And the problem started, uh, I felt that I need to look for more uh, opportunities. So this is where job fair came into, uh, came into being. I attended my first job fair in Bangalore itself, where 24-7 was one of the you know, companies uh, to be there. Uh, I submitted my resumes and called for uh, another round of interviews. Uh, I completed and uh, I was not expecting that I get a job in 24-7. It was obviously, uh, it was obviously clear that uh, they will look for better communication skills or, or whatever. So I was a little scared about it because, you know, when you study in a regional medium where English is not your main language, you will find it a little bit difficult to express yourself. But somehow I managed to uh, clear my interview and uh, now I'm working as a customer support executive for 247. And I'm really, really happy to be a part of this organization. Uh, that's all for now. Thank you so much. Awesome, Zonal, awesome. Once again, thank you so much, Sonal and Shubankar. I should not be thanking you guys so much because, I mean, we promised to have this heart-to-heart -heart conversation and I have a feel that it is already happening with Sonal, what just, she just mentioned just now. And uh, Shubankar, you also have shared snippets about your journey. And uh, there is a common thread that we are seeing here that um, all the members of the community or uh, it is a, like a common issue everywhere that people from the LGBTQIA community, they are under this constant pressure to, uh, they think or they are always seen as a misfit and they are always struggling to fit in. Like Sonal, you mentioned, uh, Shubankar, you also mentioned that, I mean, it was the realization that came in pretty late because that is not too widely discussed, much widely like talked about. There needs to be, there has to be a lot more conversations around it a lot more you know open conversations not just for the sake of having a conversation that today okay let's today so and so is the day we let's just uh, sit and talk about lgbtqia for just or uh, probably just one month or that should not be the case that's what i feel and uh, so on that note shubhankar uh, what do you think should be uh, some of the critical steps taken by organizations who are uh, trying to promote or trying to attain a diverse and inclusive work culture, what are the steps should be taken to help people from LGBTQIA community blend in perfectly with the crowd? Uh, first of all, Sonil, um, I want to tell you something, and I, I am sure both of you will agree to it that uh, half of the population of india doesn't even know what is l what is the full form of lgbtqia and yeah. lgbtqia is uh, not only a term but it's a way of life so we have to understand that it's just that one fine morning i get up and i think that oh okay fine let me be gay today and the next day i think oh, oh okay fine let me be a lesbian today it doesn't work that way okay. so it's a way of life so we don't choose to be like this we are born like this like when i come back to sonel um 
like and and this is something which we all need to understand is that the gender which we are born with and the gender that we belong to might be absolutely different from each other we might be biologically a boy but like according to the gender that we feel that we belong to is a girl and that spectrum of me being a biological boy and a gender wise girl that is called gender fluidity okay so we need to understand that that just because i'm born as a guy or a girl i shouldn't be forced to be in the gender stereotypes that we have having said that uh, what should organizations do uh, to promote inclusion and diversity but before that i would ask question to myself why would organizations do that like what is the benefit for it for the organizations or for the employees mm, from the lgbtqia and the other employees what is the benefit of both these kind of for employees first of all benefit for the organization would be that it will bring in lot of diverse people inside the organization now what does diversity do to an organization is that there is lot of churn of ideas ideas which are unique ideas which can lead to a lot and lot of developments uh, be it in any sphere so that is one thing apart from that if you are a inclusive organization uh, there are a lot of people who would want to come and work in your organization because you don't discriminate and you only give employment to people who fit by the scorecard of their merit this is from the organization perspective uh, i will again come back to the organization and tie it to the employee perspective because those are linked together now how does it come to a person who belongs to the lgbtqia community how does it uh, how does it make uh, make them feel when they join a inclusive organization first of all the sense of belongingness that i belong to a place or i go to a place every day or i work in a place which respect me for who am i the sense of belongingness the sense of feeling respected which is also a part of our core values of 247 which is respect so i tie it back to that having said that um, it also makes a lgbtqia or any person very productive if i can bring my entire self to work every day i don't have to pretend to be somebody else every single day every single minute when i'm at work and this actually causes me to go through a less of to go through less stress at my workplace because obviously the kind of work that we do obviously we have each another we have our kinds of stress levels in the work we should only keep those stress levels alive and not take extra stress of being who we aren't that is another thing uh the third thing which i would want to point out is that um it also reduces attrition now attrition affects both the employees and the employer because employers do spend a lot of resources to groom an employee and uh, employee obviously if they don't stay with an organization and they keep on changing organizations so it actually has an all effect on your uh, on your resume like you your stability bit of your resume organizations keep on questioning you that okay you have not stick to you have changed multiple organizations in the last two years what and and they question about the stability of the employee now in both the aspects both the organization and the employee feels connected to each other and it leads to a reduction in attrition which we all are trying to drive how does um, inclusiveness and diversity helps the other employees who are not a part of the lgbtqi and now i'm going to touch base that point now having said uh, having said that how do you feel when there is a person sitting next to you who is very uh, who is not open who doesn't talk to people and who doesn't mingle you feel that the person is like like introvert and um, i don't know what's wrong with that person and stuff like that how about a culture where everybody talks to everybody everybody is friendly towards everybody everybody helps and shares best practices 
Now, if you don't create that space for a person to approach you and share things with you, then there is no point of being into an organization. Then we all become individual contributors and that too we are cocooned into ourselves and we don't share our best practices. So obviously when it comes to non-LGBTQIA of the QIA part of the organization, they need to create that space for the LGBTQIA community or, or people who are not open about um, about themselves. It might be an introvert also. Might not be that the person belongs to an LGBTQIA community, but I need to be I need to open my gates for everybody who fits the credit criteria or the or the score criteria or the kind of work that my organization does. And I need to make each and every employee around me feel comfortable, feel good in their own skin. So I think I've spoken a lot about how it works. That's uh, totally fine. We always like, uh, we began the conversation by saying we would want to know more, everything. Uh, so coming back to you, Sonal, uh, in terms of the organization, how do you think 247.ai has helped uh, the community, people from the community, like uh, blend with the uh, population? What are the steps that, or what has been your, some of your best experiences at 247.ai? Um, so, uh, as I mentioned earlier that I got to, I got a chance to uh, join 247 through job fair. So when 247 joined the first LGBTQ job fair, then and there it was clear that how this organization would be very helpful to people like us. And uh, after joining also, we had, uh, you know, just to check whether I'm fine with the environment, they called me for several meetings and uh, in one of the meetings I mentioned that uh, since the beginning uh, since the joining in this company I never faced never faced any discrimination issue or anything the only issue that I faced was when I uh, used to uh, uh, go to women's washroom that time I felt a little awkward because people around me uh, used to get uncomfortable and that is common for them because Obviously, they don't know anything about me, how I feel, or where I want to, uh, what I want to use, or what I want to do. So I clearly mentioned them, and I think within few days the change happened. There was a separate, uh, uh, there was a separate gender neutral washroom for uh, every floor, which was a really uh, big change. But it happened so quickly, and that would be really uh, great. That it's not just a talk; it uh, they just put the words into action. So I really appreciate that. Awesome. 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 Uh, so Shubankar, on that note, like what has been uh, your best experience or which were the best days of yours at 247.ti, which you would like to share with the audience today? Um, I will not start with something uh, which I experienced. I would, I would probably go back and talk about something which I've seen in one of the plasma TVs. Uh, while I was I was passing by one of those plasma TVs that you have on the floor, and there was a video of video of bursting stereotype, and it was it was a new normal of like we all have stereotypes, right? And we and today we are sitting here to talk about breaking stereotypes. So it was a stereotype about men. It was a stereotype about men not doing something which the society thinks it not to be appropriate for a man to do it and breaking the stereotype. Uh, and it was a men's day video, like a man not wearing a pink t-shirt or a shirt because it is considered to be gay, breaking that stereotype. A man not crying if he is in pain, breaking that stereotype because everybody who feels sadness, there's an expression to it and somebody wants to cry and that, that is absolutely fine. Yeah. doesn't have to be gender specific that women can only cry and men cannot. Uh, so that's, that, that, that shouldn't be the case. Men can cook, which we have for ages given the quality to a woman. But if you have, like, if you do a little bit of research, most of the chefs in most of the international hotels are men. 
It's not that women are not capable of doing that, but the myths that women can cook better than men, <laughs> that was broken in the video. Uh, another thing is that if a woman is carrying a handbag, it has to be only carried by the woman and not by a man. Like it's, or I feel very chivalrous when there is a woman who is carrying a heavy handbag and I ask to help her out. And I don't mind doing that because, because people will judge me carrying a woman's handbag. Doesn't make difference to me. I'm just helping out a woman who might not be comfortable with the weight of the handbag. And it's, it, it's, a, it's a very nice thing. Like opening a door for somebody, pulling up a chair in a restaurant for somebody hasn't has to be a man thing. A woman can do it for a man also. Yeah. Right. So those are the things which we harped at there. People, and there was another thing also, like men do not fear injections. Like, hello, no, they do fear injections. It's the same kind of prick that everybody gets with an injection. So, um, yeah. yeah, so like if I am scared to injections, I don't have to be a specific gender to be scared for an injection. I, I can be any gender and we have the same feeling. So that was a video which was very path breaking. I was like, I was amazed to see that video. And I came and spoke to all my colleagues. I say that you should take two minutes of time or you should take five minutes of time and check the video twice to just understand how we are making stereotypes and how the organization has come forward to do it. Like amazing. I like kudos to the organization. Another thing which I would want to say is that in this, like there was this particular um, painting exhibition which happened in the in the basement, uh, upper basement of uh, 27 AI and the theme was LGBTQIA. It was inclusion and diversity and obviously when we went for the painting, it was, it was not only inclusion and diversity in its total aspect, but it is mostly breaking the stereotype, the gender stereotype, the sexual stereotype and stuff like that. So that was also a very welcome initiative where at least people would go there, see what is painted out on the walls, and at least might harbor a thought about it. It's it's very it's very essential for people to have the thought even. Because we can't talk about it, because we feel that we shouldn't talk about it. Um, that is one more thing. Another thing which I would want to point out is that uh, uh, the Women's Day fashion show, which happened, the leadership fashion show, a uh, right for equal. The theme was very, very, very well placed. And uh, though people, uh, there were people who had questions about why it was placed like this, but they all understood by the end of the fashion show that it was just to break the gender stereotype. Women's Day hasn't has to be all about women a biological woman. It can be about people who think that they are womanly. Like there's a difference between the biological woman and a person who thinks that they belong, they, they are woman. Yeah. And it can be an... also we, uh, like uh, on that day, we specifically remember you doing this ramp walk in this beautiful dress and we loved it. I mean, there were so many events, there were so many dance performances, there were so many things, there were exciting games and all, but at the end of the event, towards the end of the event, people, all people were talking about is, did you just see how graceful it was, how beautiful it was, and that is one memory I think people in 24-7.ai, that it can never be wiped off their mind. So it was like, it was one of my favorites. I, I mean, it's still like very alive in my mind and it was so beautiful and so graceful like uh, Shubhata and uh, so um, thank you so much and uh, over to you Sonal once again. Uh, so you were just, we were discussing how it is uh, difficult to, there are always, no matter how much we talk about organizational initiatives about like uh, getting those thoughts instilled in people's minds about uh, the gender equality and all, there are always challenges that you mentioned, Sonal, that initially, uh, so about this uh, restroom thing. Uh, so it's good that the organization took steps really fast to resolve the issue. 
so how is the like presently you both have spent a decent amount of time in the organization how is uh, your equation with your colleagues right now so like how are they like are they very supportive are they like how are they um like i mentioned uh, they never discriminated me for who i am or what i am trying to be uh, those people uh, whom i am really close to they wanted to know more about me and i didn't i did not hesitate to tell them uh, how i feel about myself and what i think about society i know that society will never accept you or the people will never accept you i don't want that what i want is just accept me for the human i am it doesn't matter to uh, it should not be a big matter for people to judge us for who i mean what we are uh, so that's what i always tell them and those people are really uh, supportive at uh, all the times uh, so i yeah i'm really lucky to have you know to work in an organization where people are also supportive and there are a few people also who uh, because they doesn't know about us so they try to i mean a little distance uh, they always keep but i'm okay with that i think we should go with the thought that we cannot change everyone's uh, mind uh, yeah i'm uh, i'm completely okay with that i always speak to people who are really comfortable around me who uh, thinks that yeah uh, she is also a human and she should be uh, she should be treated equally so that's uh, how things are with me thanks all right awesome uh so right now uh, this is for the larger audience on the what shubhanka was mentioning about this men's day video we will share the link in the comment section below and it is definitely a video about breaking gender stereotypes and it is we have this we tag this men's day women's day or we have this very like uh, month of celebration the pride month but then every all 365 days of the year should be dedicated to all genders let's move on to another interesting segment and with that we will wrap up today's conversation so uh, shubhankar what are the yeah, but the before uh, before that i want to call something out mm -hmm. right um as we were talking about having more honest conversations in the whole um uh, like to have conversations now i think uh, conversations doesn't happen because of people's mindset one thing the second thing is that people equate sex and sexuality that's like that those are two different concepts altogether like sex has been uh, like the the you know the country which 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 celebrates women's hood the country which celebrates motherhood the country which celebrates fatherhood the country which celebrates men and women mm, yes there there shouldn't be a i feel every day is pride for everybody it shouldn't be it shouldn't be stick to a pride month in june or it shouldn't be stick to a particular day in june that you feel proud of yourself uh having said that uh yes i also agree to the fact that there should be this special kind of celebrations throughout the year uh which will uh which will give an opportunity like like every day you celebrate the theme of it every day you celebrate being who you are but obviously like your birthday is that day when you feel a little bit more special about yourself you're born right so it's a it's a good day for you so um yes there should be those celebrations also to make you feel special and that's why we have dates we have birthdays anniversaries um joining dates of an organization your work anniversaries and stuff so that makes you feel a little special but that shouldn't be the only day when you feel special you should feel special throughout the year throughout your life and we should have more honest conversations and we should understand things rather than just hearing a thing and going by the face value that just because sexuality has sex in the beginning i am not supposed to talk about it because like it's a no no for me no that shouldn't be the case i if i feel that it's a no no i should find reasons why it is a no no if i feel it's a yes yes i should find the reasons why it is a yes yes i should have that reasons ready with me and if somebody comes and tells me that hey don't talk about it i would definitely have the courage to ask him why don't you want me to talk about it what is the problem and i am open to hear his or her problem too that makes us inclusive 
do not to shun somebody's ideas not to give deaf ears to somebody not to only think that my idea is correct and their idea is wrong just to give that honest hearing to everybody if we do that we become inclusive true absolutely i completely agree to that so before wrapping up a conversation for today i would want to touch upon one topic which has been a prime concern it is i don't think it is like wholly addressed it is about some of the mental health issues of people uh, who belong to the community and uh, they have, you know their daily struggles at least today uh, we are like fortunate enough to have i mean i have told you like so how happy i can't even begin to explain how the beautiful messages that are going out of this conversation to the wider world out there the all the taboos and all the myths that are about to be busted but then i think uh, so shubhankar and sonal this question is for you both sonal you can like begin with this uh, that uh, what is it that you uh, people as members of the community what is it that you think you should do or we as a society should do to help address the mental health issues of people from the community um yeah people like us i mean people belong to us uh, they really suffer a lot because of the you know social discrimination uh, the only thing that we can do is uh, uh, make people more aware about it uh, give them uh, give them a equal chance not only just in one state of our country but in all the states so that they will have the right to uh, right to have a job and right to lead a respectful life um, and it is all about you know it's not just the people who should be taking initiative it should be us too and we should fight for our rights uh, uh, which is uh, i mean uh, the right which wasn't given to us earlier because of the thoughts that uh, you know trans community or any other community will never uh work with or we uh, become a part of national main mainstream so in order to achieve that uh, and uh, to uh, you know uh, so that people like us do not suffer from any uh, depression or any sort of uh, mental dis uh, disorder thing uh, that's the best way i think the first thing is uh, education and uh, the uh, uh, second thing would be uh, more awareness for people and uh, also for the also for people like us they should never think that uh, uh, we will be judged or uh, judged on the basis of how we look uh, they should be judged on based on their quality and if they think like that maybe uh, yeah we can work on it and uh, yeah we can lead a, a normal and respectful life awesome that's awesome shubhanga would you like to add to it um isha i would like to tell you something the um, as i have like open in multiple forums about this um i think uh, when a person gets to know about uh, he or she being a part of the lgbtqia community the first struggle which comes to that person is of self assessment why am i not like the people around me why am i not normal and the point with you say that why am i not normal makes you not so you have to accept yourself first of all that there is nothing wrong in me i am the way i am and i have all the rights to live a normal life which my other counterparts in the society are living as we see charity begins at home we need to accept ourselves and in the the acceptance might not be like for me it was a one day of journey for people it takes years of a uh, struggle with the internal self to accept themselves but that struggle has to be taken like it has to like one has to go through the struggle because unless until you accept yourself you cannot tell somebody else to accept you unless until i am comfortable with being who i am how would i tell somebody else to be comfortable with who am i having said that we have other kinds of myths also um uh, you know uh, for example um, if i see a man who is a little effeminate i term him to be gay 
like a little womanly man is gay i am not even aware of the man sexuality also but just because i have been attuned by that in uh, i have been attuned by the society to think that all effeminate men are gay i think a person to be gay that should be broken the way i talk the way i walk the way i speak doesn't define my sexuality sexuality is my personal choice and uh, that doesn't depend upon my looks or the hairstyle i keep or how funky i am or how do i talk to people no that that is a wrong thing altogether uh having said that there are many deaths in the lgbtqi society which is reported i have lost uh four friends uh in in the period of lockdown that we uh, that we currently bear uh, who were not able to take the pressure of the society uh, of being the being not what they are it's a constant fight amongst you and to be something which you aren't so having said that it is very very important that you accept yourself it is very very important that you have those honest conversations wherever it is possible it hasn't has to be that you have to always stand with the mouthpiece in front of you and talk to a larger audience it can be one person next sitting next to you talk to that person tell them they might not accept you or at one go they might also take their time because th- that's their journey also to accept something which is which they don't see so common around them because people are closeted right um so you need to give them time you need to but don't shift from your paradigm you need to stick to your paradigm that just because society doesn't accept me or just because a couple of people is uh, resistant towards me being who i am uh, i should behave the way that they want me to behave no that's not the way you should stick to yourself let society and just because it's a change of mindset it takes a long time like like everything comes with a res- every battle comes with a resistance right the initial thing of any change is resistance like for the change of process for a change of product for a change of like if i take the corona example body would be comfortable sitting back at home for like 41 42 days all together we were all resistance like it was it was bad we all wanted to go out party mingle with people but there was resistance people people came out but we have to understand that it's for our better good right so resistance is a part of life we have to accept it we have to move with it and we have to move with it in such a positive way that it helps us to grow it helps us as a human being it helps the society uh, society on the bigger front to grow along with us because growth is not only you growing up growth is also sharing best practices with people around you. awesome once again such a beautiful message and i can clearly already see people who are watching this video right now every question that was asked was so beautifully answered and uh, we i think we discussed a uh, so many other important topics today thank you for this heart to heart connect and uh, we look for so thank you look forward to having more such initiatives we already have the pride circle in our organization we are celebrating the pride month at the moment with so much of bright and beautiful colors we are having if you check out our social media posts as well you will love to see like how it is like it is very overwhelming also at times that how people are responding to such messages that goes on to show that the world or the society as we know it it is no longer the same the change is happening though at a maybe at a slightly slower pace but then definitely as you mentioned chubankar all change is change is a way of life change is the norm and it takes time so definitely we would see get to see a much better world where we won't have separate conversations we won't have discrete conversations about lgbtqia or diversity and inclusion as an island or confined concept we don't have to any longer bracket this conversation so with that 
thank you so much thank you for having us and i'm sure uh, people who watch this video you had lots of takeaways from here i would request all of you to go ahead and spread this golden message out there and help people who are still struggling who are still um struggling to open up to even their families or close friends you have heard about the journeys of two amazing people we just had our discussions with uh, so it is i would expect this uh, thing to happen we it's, it's all our like we are looking forward to that day when acceptance will be the norm and with that i would like to close this conversation for today thank you so much once again it was lovely having you both thank you so much isha thank you so much sonil for having me on this conversation it was pleasure talking to both of you so i would request all my fellow mates out there uh, all my fellow mates of 247.ai to be a little sensitive towards people around you we should not do anything which will hurt a people who is just next to you indirectly or directly let's have those honest conversations let's have that heart to heart connect let's not do anything which will scar a person for life because it takes time to get over it thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank you isha